Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 34. Today is Thursday, May 24th, 2012. Boy, this year is just flying by. I'm really excited that the pool is opening in my complex this weekend. That brings up another issue about kids swimming. And I had someone email me the other day and say, my kids like to play in the kiddie pool outside in the summer. Is it all right if I put baking soda in the water? And I thought that was a great idea. And I told her, just make sure that you change the water anytime that it rains. Think of it like a decontamination bath. I wonder if there's something that can be done for pools. Jules, you have a pool. Have you looked into that at all? Like, from a chemical standpoint, what does baking soda, How will it interact with chlorine? Do we I know? Ha- I have not looked into uh, baking soda and chlorine, but what I did look into last year was putting zeolite into the filter. So you could filter the water through the zeolite. Um, The only problem with that is, just like you said, I mean, when it rains, and especially if you have a fixed pool, um, you know, there's no possible way you're going to be able to drain it and um, refill it every time. And, you know, if, if the particulates fall to the bottom of the pool, you're going to have to get in to stir it up to get it to go through the filter. So, I don't know. I have not been in a pool since uh, the year before Fukushima. Mm-hmm. Well, I keep, you know, it's in the back of my mind to always, like, look into this, like, go to a pool store and, and have a conversation with somebody about it. I'm going to try to do that sometime in the next week. Just common sense type things. You, you bring up the, the particulates sinking to the bottom, I guess, if you're in a pool that uh, you have control over the maintenance, I would probably be vacuuming the bottom of it regularly with the the pool vacuum. And I wonder if activated carbon is part already of an existing pool filtration system or if you could add that to the system somehow. If if anyone has any information on that, um, if you could email it to us so we could share it. Sorry about the abrupt ending to Tuesday's show. We uh, mistimed the clip a little bit, and then my mic was muted at the end. So I'm going to upload Tuesday's show today to YouTube, and I'll um, include the the rest of that interview with Sherry Edwards. If you didn't get to listen to it, Sherry Edwards is going to be on the show Tuesday. And I'm going to be contacting some people, see if we can get them on here, and uh, some people have been guest before to have her do readings on air and if we have time at the end of the show today I want to go over her bio because it's so extensive and I don't want to take time away from her interview on Tuesday I want to get like right into it with her so um, we'll try to give her a little bit of a uh, an intro at the end of the show today the results of my voice print that she did showed that, um, number one, that I have um, nerve damage in my lower back, which is true. Uh, I have a spinal cord injury that I got in 2008 that I'm on disability for, and also that I have severe fibromyalgia, and I haven't really shared that anywhere. She didn't know anything about me and didn't know that Charlie was going to pull me in on the show either. So it was interesting that, that... her voice scan picked up on that right away, and um, she'll explain more how that technology works. It's all really based on math. And the other thing, unfortunately, that the test showed is that I've had recent exposure to iodine-131 and zinc, which would have been from the zirconium fuel fire either back in March or April of last year. And I did have symptoms at that time, metallic taste for about a week. Or Potter Blog's been saying he thinks there was a recent fuel fire. And we talked about that a little bit on Tuesday, that maybe that had something to do with that plant explosion in southern Japan a couple weeks ago. They had said that the barrels of depleted uranium were far from the actual explosion. But, you know, who knows? Yesterday, I did an interview on True News out of Vero Beach, Florida. Tonight, I'll be on Wide Awake News again with Charlie McGrath at 9 Eastern Standard Time. And, I mean, you just can't get away from the nuke stuff. Last night, there was a submarine fire in Maine on the USS Miami. 
Kittery, Maine, a fire on a nuclear-powered submarine at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard has injured seven people. Fire crews responded Wednesday to the USS Miami at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard around 5.41 p.m. The shipyard said seven people were injured, including five firefighters and two crew members. Everyone who was hurt has been treated and released. The fire was put out early Thursday morning, burned for seven hours. Crews are still searching for hot spots. No weapons were on board the ship. All personnel have been accounted for. It was in dry dock undergoing maintenance, and it's been there for a while. And, and from what I understand, at that time, they remove any torpedoes, any weaponry that's on the ship while it's in dry dock, while it's being maintenance. However, there is a, a, a nuclear reactor on board that powers the submarine. It was in another part of the sub and supposedly was not affected, but anyone who lives in that area when it's downwind of any of the elements that might have been released during that fire, there was a uh, notation on Facebook today that it didn't smell like a normal fire. You shouldn't be out there smelling it. Shipyard Public Affairs Specialist Gary Hildreth says the fire started in the forward compartment of the sub. The shipyard says the sub's reactor wasn't operating at the time and was unaffected, but just because it's not operating, you know, it's still being cooled. Cause of the fire has not been identified. Non-essential personnel were removed from the sub. Black smoke billowed overhead. And there's a couple of videos online. I'll drop them in chat if you want to see what that fire looked like. It looks pretty intense. Did you see the, the video, Jules? I did. Yeah, it did look really intense. Am Ambassador Murata is making another public statement in English. Once a quake beyond magnitude 6 or 7 happens, the world starts heading towards the ultimate catastrophe unit for a global security issue. This is being reiterated again and again and again, and it's been now almost five weeks since Senator Wyden released his press release, and still nothing is being done at Reactor 4. In fact, I watched the cameras for a while last night. Cranes aren't moving. I mean, there is just no activity at all, from what you can tell, going on at that site. There was a former Fukushima Daiichi worker that they posted an interview on any news uh, a few days ago uh, saying that, in his estimation, there should be hundreds, if not thousands of people right now taking turns working on Reactor 4 journalist in Japan, to negotiate with the nuclear industry is like debating with the drug cartels about the reduction of law and order. On JASCO Watch, NRC's departing chairman committed to safety campaign. He gave an interview, his first interview since his resignation was accepted. The departing head of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission on Wednesday continued to press for heightened safety regulations at a meeting of industry officials who have often chaffed at his push for new rules. Jasko said the 2011 earthquake and tsunami that devastated Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear complex was a wake-up call, hopefully for everyone, but said more work needs to be done to improve reactor safety. And, you know, this is the issue that he has with the other guys in the industry. That's why they don't like him, because he's pushing for safety. <clears throat> this is an area we need to continue to make progress and where I think the industry has to work to do as well. In remarks to reporters, Jasko said he would leave it to others to judge the legacy of his reform efforts, which have been overshadowed by complaints about his management style. He also sidestepped questions about Rancher within the five-member commission. I enjoy my job a lot. I care passionately about nuclear safety. Good. Hopefully he'll turn whistleblower. We'll be back in a few minutes with Nuke Radio. And we are back. There's been an increase in some volcano activity. Sakurajima exploded again yesterday with a huge static discharge. There's some good videos of that on YouTube, and Dutch since has a couple on his site. There's been a number of earthquakes also continuing around Japan, some of them north, some of them south. So we've been watching that closely. Last night when I was doing the forecast, I've been doing a series of videos, 
an association with the forecast called the Nuke Industry is Dead. I came across a video from Kevin Allen, Master of Many Things, that he actually put out in May of last year. And he's been very passionate about Fukushima. We were actually supposed to have him on the show uh, about a month or so ago, and I'm going to try to get him on here again soon. He had a detox site up, one of the first places to find information about Fukushima. I have a lot of respect for these people like Kevin, Kevin Blanche, Miss Milky, the clown who've been warning since day one how bad the situation is. It took me a few months to uh, get enough research together where I felt comfortable going forward with it, but they knew what they were looking at, and their assessment of the situation was dead on. We'd like to play a portion of that video from Kevin Allen. It's uh, about eight minutes. Uh, most of the ones with the smaller kilobyte don't have a lot of information. I haven't gone through all of them. I've gone through enough of them to pull up the current levels of iodine, cesium, and xenon gas. I think what I show you now will not only scare the hell out of you, um, and it should. I'm not here to scare you, but a little bit of fear um, is also a tool to cause action to protect yourself, and that is the reason that 2.30 in the morning, I will be updating my blog and getting this information out to you. So I hope that uh, you'll not only appreciate that, but that you will take measures to protect yourself. I'm not exhausting myself here it's just to give you a fun video to watch. I'm doing this so that you will spread the word, protect yourselves and your families, and if you have a moment or an idea to contact any form of government and make a formal complaint uh, we must demand that the United States not only start intense radiation monitoring, but they start intense monitoring of our food and make available resources that we will need to rid our bodies of this, protect ourselves from it. They need to set up a site that is available to all Americans uh, with this information and they probably have more detailed information than what we're seeing now but I think what we're seeing now will show you that this this is uh, it's a very bad situation folks um, we'll go on to some of the charts this is the cesium 137 you can see the actual time 2011 the fifth the, uh, this is for the 11th and the 12th if you remember or go back to any of the other videos that I've had, uh, the cesium-137 was only seen in little whispers and really didn't seem all that bad, although at the time I did tell you that the numbers being used were understated and that the charts were understated because they were based on figures first released from Fukushima that were understated. I have to think that these are at least more accurate because they show an influx in the amount that's coming over here. Uh, you can see this dark purple hitting Alaska, okay, in, in Canada, all the, the uh, this is, uh, the, the levels shown here have to be, without doing exact math, ten times worse than what I have been forecasting and the information that I had available at the time. Uh, this is a big deal. We must start protect ourselves. I'll go on to the next. This is iodine 131, which we, you know, everybody knows that this is very dangerous, especially to the thyroid. <sighs> the charts say it all. We're being inundated with heavy, heavy concentrations of iodine 131. Canada, especially. But also our West Coast, our, the whole country is getting some, as you can see. And not only us, you can see that it continues on. So this is not just a United States issue, folks. This is a global issue. And I, I pray that all of you will share this information, uh, whether it's retweeting the link uh, to this or mirroring this and reloading it on your YouTube or however you can expand the number of people that see this please do uh, immediately uh, anyone that sees it tonight I would expect if you're a human being and you care about other human beings that you would take the few minutes like I have 
and at least repost this on your Facebook or on your Twitter. Um, this is urgent, and our government is not doing anything about it. Actually, they're doing everything they can to hide this information from us. Um, I don't know if this video will stay up very long. I'm going to put it on YouTube, and then I will immediately put it on my blog as well, and I will have the file recorded so it can't go away, but it may be taken out of sight. And if anybody notices that, please contact me immediately through any of my contact information, even if it's call me directly, and let me know that it's been taken down so that I can repost it immediately. Uh, mirror this, share this, please, people. This is a very dangerous, especially to our children. The levels that they are being subjected to, if we don't take action, they will not be able to reproduce. They may have cancers and be dead by the time they're 30, and that's not fear-mongering, that's fact. This is the levels in Japan. Now, we have been told that, you know, Japan is safe and the winds are blowing away and that, well, you can see for yourself that the winds aren't blowing away. Winds don't just always go in one direction. And now we have proof that more than half the island has been in, inundated with heavy, heavy levels of cesium-137. There's one more chart that I've pulled up. This is the xenon gas. Now, this was the worst-looking chart in the prior um, post that I put out. If you'll remember, the xenon gas was the heaviest concentrations, but it still was not a blanketed effect. You can see that if you're anywhere in the northern hemisphere, you are taking in extremely high volumes of xenon gas. This, this information has been repressed from you people. As Americans, we should be abhorred, and we should no longer trust anything that the government tells us. This is, there is no reason for this. I understand not wanting to scare people, but God damn it. People have to be responsible for their own actions. We cannot put everyone in the United States, Canada, Mexico, uh, the world in danger because a few may get upset, overreact, and cause a crime. We will have to deal with those people when they appear. But in the meantime, we are all breathing, eating, drinking radiation. And our government is hiding that from us. Now, for all you people that want to call anyone a conspiracy theorist, you can jam your heads up your asses because that's evidently where they've been for all these years when you believe the government. The government hid this information from you. The government put you and your children at risk by hiding this from you. So if you think that the NLE in the New Madrid or any other goddamn thing that the government is doing now is for your protection, you may want to think again. You may want to look to alternate media, and you damn well better share this information. If you have relied on me for this information, uh, I beg you to share this with your fellow humans. The only way... I mean, this is a year ago, and I, he nailed it. More detailed information than what we're seeing. Uh, you better believe it. Freedom of Information Act request showed... Not only was the NRC talking about this and covering it up behind the scenes. And welcome back to Nuked Radio. I'm not sure where we got cut off there. I apologize again. I'm having trouble hearing when the music comes on, signaling me to finish. What Kevin had said was that the government probably has more detailed information than what we were seeing, and he certainly was right about that. As we know from the Freedom of Information Act requests of not only the NRC conversations that were happening behind the scene, but the speedy data that was being hand-translated from Japanese to English and being delivered to our government and the governments of China and Russia. The other thing he said is if you are a human being and you care about other human beings, you need to share this information, even though this video is a year old. Everything that he said in there has happened. His assessment of the situation was dead on. And he continues this day to be very active 
in trying to alert the masses, please subscribe to his channel on YouTube if you haven't done so already. It's called Master of Many Things 1, and he is Kevin Allen on Facebook. Now, I used a portion of that simulation on the forecast for yesterday, and if you see the Xenon map, at the end we were just inundated the entire northern hemisphere was covered and it was around that time that I started noticing and posting videos to YouTube of these strange rays in the sky that went from one horizon to another and there was a measurement that I used to do in ophthalmology measuring the eyeball with a light it was called retinoscopy and at times you're using the actual material in the eye to reflect light off the back of the eye. Sometimes you're doing it through a gas if the patient had surgery. And that's what the lines from this light looked like in the sky were the same kind of lines that I saw when I would shine a light through gas in an eyeball. And I know that that's a very uh, loose um, connection. But I have lots of good weather books books about clouds and the sky and the night sky and our atmosphere and I have never seen those rays documented anywhere in any of those books and I've looked through all of them a few times that was a new atmospheric phenomenon and if you look at what the xenon chart looked like and there was also a few videos that were posted from Naples Florida I believe in a couple areas, other areas of the country, Michigan, there were a few of them from the other side of the state as well. And I'll dig up that link to that video on the break and drop it into chat. Someone else who's been very, very vocal about Fukushima. In fact, he's been warning about nuke plants long before Fukushima happened in their proximity to fault zones is Bug from Believers Underground, Scott Owen. He had a radio show on Oracle that I believe he's not doing right now. I understand that he was in a, a fire and lost a lot of stuff just recently. That's not verified. It's a comment that I saw yesterday, and I hope that he's doing okay. We need to support his efforts as well. You can find him on YouTube as Believers Underground. We want to play a segment of his most recent video where he has a theory of what the melted uranium could be compared to, and that should provoke some thought. We'll play that clip right now. It's about two minutes. This is Scott with Believers Underground. You know, I, I was reading through this newest report that came out of Fukushima, and Galactic Wacko, man, correct me if I'm wrong, but they state that the second reactor has 100% core melt. They've never seen it in the history of meltdowns, man. I mean, that would mean it's self-sustaining, right? That would be a definition of a neutron star. Wouldn't it? I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there, man. But, you know, that's a mini sun. You got a little mini sun there, man. It's fusion. The sun's fusion. Okay. Wow. Well, we need to come up with some ideas on that one, man. Uh, I, I would think uh, maybe laser, your laser technology is able uh, to generate those high temperatures, you know. Uh, maybe a, a laser field. <laughs> maybe to, to elevate it or something. You know, if you get it, if you can suck power off that sucker, man, it'll power the planet. Yeah, you know, it, it, man, what a roll, boy. I mean, you're in a rock and a hard place over there. You know, especially if another quake hits, man, if those poles merge. Wow. Man, talk about the, the land of the rising sun, all right. In our face, man. Way uncool. You know, that's that green dragon. Clean energy. That's why they did the CO2 gas stuff, man. That stuff has never been... You, you paid for all those facilities, man. You paid for them. Okay, they didn't pay for them. And they're not self-sustaining. Man. They're, they're expensive as hell to run. And if they have a meltdown, man, they throw the buck on you, man. <laughs> that was a clean energy fraud and a, and a half, man. That's part of MAD, mutually agreed destruction. You got he brought up an important point about um, Price Anderson. These new plants are subsidized by taxpayers. 
and by the government. It's how they collect the plutonium that's generated from each reactor in the U.S. There's over 100, 500 pounds of plutonium per year that they get to refine and turn into weapons so we can go and spread democracy in other countries. And we're paying for that. Now they want to raise our energy costs. And if something goes wrong at one of these plants, they're capped out. And the taxpayers pick up the bill. It's going to cost hundreds of billions of dollars just to manage the Fukushima situation. TEPCO can't even pay for it. That's why the government's taking it over. And you look at this from a global economic perspective, too. What is this going to do to the economy if Japan goes under? This is another reason why it's not being talked about. They don't want you to know how bad the situation is. They don't want people to start suing Japan to help clean up the tsunami debris, to help pay for the decontamination that needs to happen over here, to pay for the mitigation efforts to protect our food supply, to help pay for the sickness that's coming down the road. Who is going to pay for this? Japan can't even pay to manage the situation. The government's having to take this over from TEPCO. We appreciate Bug and we appreciate all his efforts that he's done to warn the masses. Now, Kevin Blanche has a great idea, and we're going to share that clip when we come back. He's looking at it from a litigation standpoint, and he's going to take some very drastic steps in the next few days that he's going to lay out for us. And anyone that can support his efforts, even if it's just words of encouragement under his videos to show solidarity, to show that you want to help, we need to step up our game with this. I only need to walk out my front door. I look to the left. I see my trees mutating. I look down on the table. I see the weeds that my kids picked the other day that are mutated. I look to the right. I see the pine trees turning red. All you have to do is walk out your front door and see evidence of Fukushima all around you. And 90% of people have no idea that this is going on. These videos that we're playing excerpts from and the forecast video, I put in at the top of the hour into chat. I'm going to post them again on the break. Please post them to Facebook, Twitter, to the Weather Channel to the Huffington Post, CNN, Fox, your local news, and we'll be back shortly. You're listening to Nuked Radio. What I'm going to do. This is my plan. United Citizens United, which is citizens divided. If a corporation could be a person, then a person could be a corporation. I'm going to incorporate myself. I'm going to incorporate myself. Watch me. Watch me. I'm going to file a lawsuit. I need an international attorney, a good attorney, an attorney that is tough. In the spirit of Bobby Kennedy, in the spirit of Truman, in the spirit of Teddy, those type of guys. Look, it was popular culture that shifted FDR's mind. It was popular culture that shifted Teddy's mind. It was popular culture that shifted John Kennedy's mind. It is popular culture that shifted W's mind. Popular culture is ignorant, is naive, it is ring kissing, it is Rupert Murdoch, has posturing and groomed you and turned you into the bitches you are. Oh, not me. Oh, not me. Here's what I need. This is what I need. With or without you, I am doing this. I am doing this. One. I need a web designer to build us a web. I am going to form a co-op. The co-op that I'm going to form is going to be a non-profit. It's going to be in my name because my middle name is the name Dwayne. The co-op is going to stand for this. Everybody who's been murdered by the nuclear lie. I am going to use the motto out of the battle for Chernobyl. As she said, I'm going to get her permission. I'm hopefully they join with me and involved. The greatest thing to come out of that meltdown in Chernobyl in 1986 was not season, was not plutonium, it was lies. That's what this is going to be based on, and I'm going to sue the NRC. I'm going to sue the IEA. I'm going to sue them, me, personally. 
as they murdered my father, I'm going to sue the United States government. I'm going to sue the United States military. I'm going to sue them. I'm going to sue them. I'm going to sue them for the open air test in Nevada. I'm going to sue them in an international court, not here in this very tall, radical pussy attorneys who just lay down. Not here. Oh, no. I need an international attorney with some balls. I need a web designer, a web designer to build us a website. I will incorporate. I'm going to incorporate myself. If corporation can be a person, I can be a corporation. And I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to build this site. I'm going to sue them on these grounds. They're murdering me. I am still very, very sick. There's some kind of fallacy out there that thinks, oh, maybe Kevin has been cured. I think Kevin, oh, no. Oh, no. Just because I fight and I continue on, I am so far from cured. I am sick. I am very sick. That's why I'm putting this up today, because I got a hunch I'm going back into the hospital tomorrow or Friday for a while, as I am very, very sick with leukemia. Look. As I fight this battle, and I go on with this battle, as I keep you guys posted in the context of this man-made evil cancer that I had. They murdered my, look, I had a brilliant finance career. If you look back through my videos the last two years, every one of you people, as two years ago, look at my portfolio. If you'd have followed that, oh, look at my call on Apple. Look at when I told you to get out of gold at 1900. Look when I told you to get out of silver at 50. Let me tell you, I not all told you to buy Apple and freaking the derivative on Apple, I told you what strike and what month, which I nailed it right on. Right on. They stole my beautiful, incredible fine. It's magnificently over. I am sick. My finance career is over. My educational career is over. My hawk and trial, my beautiful plastering business, as I went across those walls, is magnificent. They took it from me. I'm going to sue them under that ground. That is the premise. They murdered my father took him from me and my family. I'm going to file a lawsuit. In the international courts, I need a publicist. My book was all written. My book was all written as I lay all this out into detail about the people who really raised me. And I got raised by some powerful, powerful people in the FBR administration. Really powerful people. And I laid up. So when I got sick, I had to go and rewrite it because there's another chapter to be written. It changed the whole context of what's going on. Look, that is my plan. I'm going to do this with or without you. I'm going to form a co-op, a non-profit organization. I need a website built. I'm going to transport my videos to that site. I'm going to file a lawsuit. I'm going to go on a... Look, I'm an ex-investment banker. I'm going to take myself public. I really am. I'm going to take myself public for the nonprofit organization. I'm going to do a road show this summer. I'm going on the road. Hopefully I'll stay alive long enough to freaking do it. And I'm going to take it on the road. Hopefully my central line out of my heart will come out. I don't know. Even with or without it, I'm doing this. That's what I'm going to do. I need a good attorney. I need a web designer. I need a publicist. And I'm going to hit the road. I'll do any radio show I can find, any television show all over the world I can find. And I'm going to file a lawsuit against the NRC, against the IEA, against TEPCO, against British Petroleum, against the United States military. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Look. Please do whatever you can today. If it's just 20 minutes, go on Facebook. Twitter, InfoJam, these videos. You can um, copy mutation images from Mutation Watch, articles from any news, any of Lauren's interviews on ExoPolitics. Post them everywhere. If you haven't emailed your senator or your state rep, please do so today. The Alaskan coast is starting to get hit big time with tsunami debris. Part of it is this orange foam that is used as a building material, and there were almost 200,000 buildings that were destroyed and washed out to sea, so there is a lot of this stuff because it's light. Wind helped push it across the ocean much faster than oceanographers thought was even possible. And as it hits the surf, it's breaking up into little tiny pieces, and the birds are walking around and eating it on the shore. And they have done Geiger readings on this material. They said they are picking up radioactivity, but it's not above what they would consider normal. But they did not share the numbers. That was posted on CNN. And they have a helicopter flyover of this beach. 
And if this is just the first wave of stuff coming, they need to organize a coalition to deal with this immediately. This should not be a bunch of volunteers that live in the area having to deal with this stuff. We need big time solutions for a lot of big problems. Papa Peeps, who's a guy on my Facebook page from England, who shares readings all the time, wrote up something and posted it last night that I want to share. Fukushima, the countdown is on. We have to fix this and fix it now. We must all pull together and be as one total unity to achieve this. This is the only way we cannot rely on our masters to care about us. They don't want to fix the problem because this would mean they have to admit there is a problem. Yes, people are talking about it, but not enough, and there is no action. We cannot waste any more time. Nuclear power has a flaw. It is unsafe and has the ability to create disease and cause death of biblical proportions. But to do this, we must bypass this current system of divide and conquer or divide and rule that is set up by the so-called elitists to distract us by dividing us up with things like black versus white, Christians against Muslims, East versus West, this political party or that political party, conservative, liberal, left wing, right wing. And this is even played out down to the stadium sports that also divide us this football team or that football team and it goes on and on these things have all been put in place to distract the people of the world by separating us dividing us so as a species we cannot band together and take charge of our own lives we have forgotten our true nature if we are fighting each other or we are separating ourselves from each other by the means above we are not a collective therefore we cannot be that community that we should be a worldwide planetary community of human beings working together for the greater good of all living things while this has been manipulated, engineered, even steered down to this way of thinking, they've been able to control, rule, and conquer us. And because there is no one band of brothers, nor the whole community, one nation, even one world of thought to stop these megalomaniacs, they have created something truly horrific. Get everyone you know who doesn't know and shake them, scream at them if necessary, and make them understand that there is no time to waste, that we have to act now. The people that we have elected worldwide are insane. They are clinically insane to allow this monster of a nuclear disaster to continue for over 400 days and its continued releases of nuclear material that is spreading worldwide and killing many in Japan and also far away. And the poor Pacific Ocean, my God, what have they done? It's never going to stop contaminating this world, and if the Unit 4 FU fuel pool does its party trick, that's it. This in turn will set off a cascade of events that will be truly horrible for all life. Will there be any life after? Is this... A life worth living the children of this world do not have a safe place to live and never will so these people need to be removed from office and now so that we can build the community that's missing from this world bring all four corners together and take charge of this problem at fukushima and pray that we can fix it in time can we do that please we're going to have a very important broadcast on tuesday sherry edwards created an alternative health care system and she intends to share it with the people and leave those who insist they know what's best for us in the dust. Vocal profiling has the ability to let us know the intentions of our leaders, the motivation of our partners, the foundation of our sense of self-health and well-being. From birth to death, we use sounds to express our needs and emotions. She's going to actually be giving the software away for free to any listeners who want to download it to their computers. We'll be doing some vocal analysis of people on the air. Make sure that you are here for that show. Do what you can to spread the word. And everyone, please stay safe.